Good morning, everyone. Welcome inside the Faith Loop. Um, it's over there. That's okay, Dad. If it goes off, it goes off. <laughs> we'll live through it. It's just a phone. I've been running around on my head like a chicken on the head. <laughs> it just says we're live. That's yeah. all. We yeah, go we're live. live. There you go. Just a warning. <laughs> Don't Be answer warned. your phone if you hear that. <laughs> Be warned. Uh, thanks for joining us. We, we're we're looking for you. I don't have my laptop in front of me, so I'm 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 not seeing. Justin's going to have to watch the 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 Facebook and the comments. So we'll rely on him to take care of that. Like I said, we just got back into town. We've been out of town, and yeah. So we're 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 a little bit of a mess this morning, but that's okay. We're going to have some fun. We got a great conversation. Listen, folks. Um, I think and I believe. And this is where we talk about our convictions, who we are, what we are, and the type of people we are. Where does it... Um, where does it... Where do we stand? And how do we put ourselves in a place that says, no, this is who we are, this is what we are, and this is how we're going to live from here on out, whatever, whatever comes, Right? We have to do that, don't we, Dad? Yeah, absolutely. The uh, the news that's going on, everything that's happening, um, it just keeps it just keeps more diving more and more into the surreal, doesn't it? Well, it's like an old saying, you know. We're we're down to the place where the rubber meets the road, <laughs> yeah. and uh, you know, it's no longer uh, will you or uh, are we going to think about it or you think that might happen? No, it's taking place. Right. And, uh, you know, we either face it and we stand up uh, for who we are and what we are, or we don't. And that's the... We're going to take a little trip back here, guys. Because, as you can see on the, uh, on the screen there, language is under attack, right? Right? Um, Justin, what is that? Oh, there it is. Oh, boy. It's a tough morning, folks. I don't have my laptop in front of me. It's killing me. The language of truth is under attack. So this is where we have to determine what's true. And who's telling the truth? What is truth? And this is the age-old question I know people. And this is what's funny to me. You know, we're, we're sitting here and we're talking about Jesus, we're talking about these things, but we're also talking about the world and what's going on. People go, well, there's a difference between theology and, you know, this and what. Ah. You know, here's an example of how important language is. Yes, go ahead. To say it right or wrong. Uh, Mr. Biden was in one of the states the other day. I forget, Idaho or somewhere. And he was giving a speech, and after he got done, they asked him questions. This reporter asked him a question, and when he started to speak, they turned his mic off. Yeah, because they don't... <laughs> no, because it wasn't scripted. It wasn't written down. Right. What he wanted to say. So, we're, it's turning his mic... I mean, how obvious is that? They do it all the time, All the Dad. time. How all obvious? All the time. And when... We, Dad and I, I don't... I, and I hate to say it this way, but I, I really have no other way to describe it. I don't, I don't believe in theology and the way that we ascribe to things and stuff. I, how do you study God? I mean, that's really what it means. Theos, theosology. Logo, it comes from the word logos. It's the study of something. And we sit around and we study, study. How about we get to know him? How about we set in place a relational context in which we understand and know who we are? But yet we're too busy... Uh, trying to philosophize. Well, it comes a little bit from what Paul told Timothy in the King James Version, study to show thyself approved unto God a workman. doesn't mean that in Greek. It means be diligent. There you go. Be diligent in your life for God, in your life for Jehovah. That doesn't mean we can't study the Scripture or no. look at those things and, no. and understand who and what we are, but it is practical application. It is the language of life. It is the language by which we exist and how we speak, how we act, how we conduct ourselves on a regular basis. Well, to your point, the head of Harvard Theological yeah. Seminary is an atheist now. They hired an atheist 
<laughs> yeah, so how do, you, how do you study God when the atheist is in charge? <laughs> uh, right? It's absurd. It's so much absurdity in the world right now, it just absolutely blows your mind. And this is why I don't like to use this language. No, I don't. I don't, don't because people say theology. The, uh, that's that's man-made stuff. That is man-made stuff. That's a thought process of man to make himself righteous. Instead of understanding what we need to do to be, to act according to the truth, to conduct our lives in a manner in which is pleasing toward the Father, which is what Paul said, which is your reasonable service. Well, you know, the Scripture tells us that uh, way back in the beginning, uh, they... Uh, wanted to make God into, uh, you know, a creature, four-footed beast, winged beast, and so forth. Uh, and the, they say the word there is image. Yeah. Well, that's what they think. You know, well, you can't make an idol. You can't make God into this. Well, what kind of an image are we making God into today? Amen. And that's exactly, exactly. what some of these theologians do. They're making Jehovah in their own image of yes. him instead of who he is. It's like some people, uh, you know, when they meet someone else, uh, many times this happens in marriage, and I know this, I've counseled for many years, uh, one or the other thinks they can change the other one. Mm -hmm. uh, the wife thinks she can change her husband, the husband thinks she can change his wife. Uh, you can't change anybody. The only one that can change them is them. Yeah. And so, you know... Uh, the Lord is who he is. Yes. And we can't change him into what we think him to be. No. And and here's the thing, and this goes to this thought process. I'm not going to get into it, but just go look up anthropomorphism. <laughs> mm -hmm. And I, I'll talk about, I'm going to talk about this at some point here as we go along, because I think it's an interesting topic. But anthropomorphism and how that's looked at today brings about some of the thought processes of what dad is discussing there and how we relate to God and what our ideas are of our creator and us. So, but look, we read this in Genesis 11, 1, and it says, and the whole earth was of one language and of one speech. Yep. We know we read down and said, God, uh, Jehovah came down and confounded or confused the language lest they accomplish anything they imagine to do. Mm -hmm. And that's what it says. That's King James. That's, and it's, but it's the same idea. The, whatever they've put themselves to do. Okay? Well, what are we imagining right now? What is man imagining right now? Because what is, what is um, hindering him? Nothing. Language is no longer a barrier, is it? No. They've overcome that. But what is language? What is speech? And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to share with you a couple things here as to what, what was done there. These two words, you have language, which is um, uh, it's probably from the idea of termination, uh, the lip, by implication, language, by analogy, a margin. Um, so it's basically talking about the mouth. Now, I personally believe language and speech should be flip-flopped in the English language. I think that should represent speech more than anything from the lip. Because language, I think, denotes something different. But nonetheless, this is the way it was translated in the King James. Okay? In the ancient language uh, from uh, Je Jeff Benner's uh, ancient Hebrew lexicon, the ancient form of this word would be to gather or gather. Concretely, lip. The pictograph is a picture of a thorn representing a turning. Um, and then you have the picture of a mouth. Combined, these mean turning the mouth. So what were they doing at that time? They were turning their mouths against Jehovah. The rim or lips of the bowl, which, uh, which circle around it, the bowl is used for gathering things together for eating. And so this is why this is representing uh, the mouth. Okay. Uh, the word speech there is translate is from the word, it is the, the word debar, or the where we get the, every time you see the word of God in the Old Testament, this is the word that's being used there. It's translated debar, from debar into word. 
which is by implication a matter as of spoken, a thing, adverbally a cause, act, advice, and then it goes into it. Uh, all the different ways uh, you can translate this uh, Hebrew word into English. And there's like 20 words there, I believe, yeah? There's a bunch. So I'm not going to say it, but it's an implication. By implication, a matter as of spoken, okay? A matter, which in uh, Jeff Benner's ancient Hebrew lexicon, anciently it's order. See? So language, and this is why I say language more than just what's coming out of the mouth, but language itself, and this is where I flip-flop them, but nonetheless, order, an Arrangement or placement of something creating order. A careful arrangement of words or commands. When Jehovah was speaking, and this is what happens, this is what we're seeing in the world today. And what dad, to Dad's point, why did they turn off Joe Biden's microphone? Because they didn't want him speaking out of order. Right. They don't want him saying anything that uh, would uh, be maybe against what they... Uh, doesn't they, fit the message. No, it doesn't fit their cause. And this is what's happening, and we see it right here. This is, see, I was telling Dad before we started here today, this is what happens. We, we read the Bible like some fable. You know, uh, just how, you know, and he come down to confound the, confuse the language, and mm -hmm. we don't even understand. No. Think of what Nimrod was doing and those men in that day as what you're seeing in the world today. Right? Absolutely. Throughout the world. Not just the United States, but throughout the world. Uh, in fact, you know, I'm 79 years old, and I've been alive since 1941. I've been aware of things since about 1950, you know, <laughs> <laughs> when I was a kid, uh, as far as things like that. But, you know, I have never, ever in my lifetime, and I've seen uh, war, uh, the Korean War, the Vietnam War, in which I almost was in. Uh, uh, you know, I've seen all these conflicts, but I have never, ever seen the world come together in a sense like it has recently. Yeah. Uh, saying the same things all over the world, doing the same things all over the world. Uh, you know, it's just uh, the vaccinations. The, uh, the other day, uh, well, yesterday, in fact, on the, on the news here in, uh, in St. Louis, they uh, said that the theaters that are going to be open this fall, the plays and so forth, we have several uh, uh, theaters in town that do right. uh, live plays and so forth, you know, and like Broadway. And uh, they said without a certificate of vaccination or a negative COVID test, you will not be admitted. There it is. There it is. Well, I don't have any rights anymore? No. Oh, no. then why don't I get a test against flu and make sure I don't have the flu when I go in there? Right. Or some other contagion. Right. What, what's stopping that? Yeah. No. It's utter absurd, absurdity. It's, it's an agenda, and it's what we're talking about. It's an orderly arrangement. These people are setting themselves in this place. This is why if you... Re and you, you see the montages of what is being said. Australia. Australia's... Horrible. It is. I it's mean, a police state now. They have locked it down. They can, and you know what's funny is I was watching a, a show the other day, and they they showed one of the health directors of Melbourne and whatnot. She they she asked a que there was she was asked a question by a reporter about contact tracing. You know what will these steps be and whatnot. And she says, this is her words. She said, well, in, in the new world order, we're going to have to really see what, uh, that lo what contact tracing looks like. That was her answer. That seems awful. And I know people then, and then everybody has to come out and debunk, oh, no, the conspiracy theorist should you. Well, why use that term? Why use those words? See, you can't just you can't just throw that off as oh that she was just no she used that in a setting 
on what was happening and how we, we talk about the Great Reset. We talk about these things because these people are of one language and one speech. And one mind. And that's what it goes to. That's what, when I say language, that's what I'm talking about because the speech comes from the mind. The order, they've set in place an order in their minds of what life and what existence should be. Language, and this is why I say, you know, it's tough because I look at this. So if you're looking at this, you're looking at the word debar. Mm -hmm. the, order, the orderly arrangement that Jehovah set in place is being undone by man. Yes, absolutely. That's what they're saying. We are bringing the world into order. This is what Nimrod was saying. This is what this is about here, folks. This is what is being said. They were of one language and one speech. Today, we are facing the same thing. This is what it's about. Absolutely. And I've said this several times recently, and I thoroughly believe it. Uh, I might have even mentioned it on, on this show a couple of times. I don't know. But why, you know, you have to ask the question, why? Why are these men thinking this way? Why yeah. uh, do they do it? And my question is, why does every government that's ever been formed by man end up trying to oppress the people it rules over? What? What is that? Why? You know, we're not happy unless somebody's bowing down to them. They're not happy unless somebody's crawling on their knees to them. They're not happy. That's the truth, boy. Why do they have this? Well, I'll tell you why. Because they're of their father, the devil. That's who they're of. Now, that doesn't mean everybody in Congress, everybody in the Senate, everybody in the House is that way. But certain leaders are. And they're influenced heavily by spirits that aren't good. And this, see, Satan hates man. He was a murderer from the beginning. The first thing that ever happened that he, created, he caused was murder. And the Lord says, Jesus said, he was a murderer from the beginning. He hates, you have to understand, he hates man. He hates man being at liberty to serve God. He hates the fact that man uh, can decide for himself whether I'm going to serve the Lord or not. And uh, he wants to oppress mankind. That's always been his aim, is to oppress mankind. And right now, we see that oppression probably in a greater sense than we've seen it ever in the history of the world. I'm going to read something when Dad and I are going to finish, because we, we're looking at points in history. And like I said, this is 2,000 years later. We, we think that what's, what we're seeing now in the world is unprecedented. It's not. In, in this respect, this has been man's goal from the beginning. Absolutely. Just on a greater scale is all. It just, I believe that we're coming to, we're seeing what was revealed to John and how these things were, I believe we're seeing it Absolutely. in its fullest capacity. It's been setting in motion and motion and motion. And when you talk about philosophy, when you talk about ideas, does any do you, here's the thing too does people do people really know what the word renaissance means we we sit around and we talk about the renaissance and all we think is a painting on the wall mm -hmm. yeah. right yeah that's that's true of most people and i want to i want to i want to bring this to bear here real quick before we use this and that's what we think of it why because we're ignorant and i know that offends people at times but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bring this word to bear. Dad and I have talked about this for a long time. Um, if you want to go look up the word ignorant in the online etymology dictionary, you're more than welcome to because it'll show you this. Why do we say, you know, that, oh, I just didn't know? The word ignorant, we go, well, I, I didn't know. I just didn't know. The, the first word in ignorant is ignore. You pay no attention to. You pay it no mind. You disregard it. Mm -hmm. We disregard the truth of something because we're told, oh, it was just a painting. Oh, Renaissance. Well, well, I just didn't know. No, you chose not to know. You ignored the truth of it. Mm -hmm. This is what sits at the basis of all of these things. And this is where mankind is. This is why you're controlled. This is why they believe they can control you. It doesn't mean dumb or stupid. No. 
It means no. you just don't want to know. You're ignorant because you ignore it. Right, exactly. You ignore it. Sometimes, you know, we just don't know things. Mm-hmm. But usually that's as a child. And this goes to Paul's. This is why Paul was saying what he said when he said, you know, when I was a child, I talked like a child, I thought like a child, I acted like a child. This is, this is exactly what Paul's pointing to. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. Amen. What that means is now I'm required, now I am accountable to what I should know. Absolutely. You can't ignore it any longer. And I'll show you. It's going to be a second here. Paul is, this is when Paul, this is Acts 17, 22 through 34. Paul's addressing the men at the Areopagus, which is Mars Hill. These are Greeks. These are philosophers of the day. These are men of power in Athens. So Paul, standing in the midst of the Areopagus, said, Men of Athens, I perceive that in every way you are very superstitious. The King James does this correctly, and this is the word used. If you read our modern translations, it says religious. Right. That's not what he said. No. They didn't use the term religious in that day. It was superstitious. For as I passed along and observed the objects of your worship, I found also an altar with this inscription to the unknown God. What therefore you worship as unknown, this I proclaim to you. The God who made the world and everything in it, being Lord of heaven and earth, does not live in temples made by man. Now, I want you to understand something. Paul's taking, Paul doesn't mean that the, that unknown uh, inscription there the, to the unknown God is Jehovah. That's not what he means. He's, t- he's, taking in, he's taking something that was there and using it to start the conversation. Right. That doesn't mean they were worshiping Jehovah ignorantly. You know, oh, we just didn't know who it was. No, that's not what it means, okay? Um, Does not live in temples made by man, nor is he served by human hands as though he needed anything, since he himself gives to all mankind, mankind life and breath and everything. And he made from one man every nation of mankind to live on all the face of the earth, having determined allotted periods and the boundaries of their dwelling place, that they should seek God and perhaps feel their way toward Him and find Him. Yet He is actually not far from each one of us, for in Him we live and move and have our being. As even some of you, some of your own poets have said, for we are indeed His offspring." Being then God's offspring, we ought not to think that the divine being is like gold or silver or stone, an image formed by the art and imagination of man. The times of ignorance God overlooked, but now He commands all people everywhere to repent. The times of ignorance God overlooked. There was a time where Jehovah overlooked the obstinance, the stubbornness of Israel, the stubbornness of man. He overlooked it a little bit and said, You're choosing to ignore me. What did he call Israel? You are a stubborn and stiff-necked people. You ignore justice, faith, and mercy while you're doing all this other stuff. That was the point. These are the things that Paul's bringing to bear here. Because he has fixed a day on which he will judge the world in righteousness by a man whom he has appointed, and of This he has given assurance to all by raising him from the dead. He's talking right about Jesus. You know, it's funny that that Paul called him a man. Mm -hmm. Shocker, huh? Yeah. We're We're all giving an account by how we emulate Jesus Christ, folks. And he is a man. And this he has given assurance to all by raising him from the dead. Now, when they heard of the resurrection of the dead, some mocked. But others said, "Eh, we're going to hear this again. This will be cool. We'll hear you again about this. So Paul went out from their midst, but some men joined him and believed, among whom also were Dionysius Dionysius and, uh, and Dionysius the Aeropagate and a woman named Damaris, and others with them. Okay. To my point and what we're talking about today, 
This isn't something new, is it, Dad? No. What we're facing? No. Not at all. No. It's been since Cain. <laughs> <laughs> you, know. you go back and you look. We've been facing these things from that time. You see it in Nimrod. You see this. Man has been attempting to set his mind in, in an order that defines him as his own being apart from Jehovah. And as you can see what Paul said in there, this is why we move and breathe and have our being. Absolutely. Because we were created by and in the image and likeness of Jehovah. Yeah. Why won't we accept that? You got me. I know, uh, well, you know, man is so... Well, I don't know the word to even use. Egotistical doesn't even get there. <laughs> but he is so desirous. And I think I think the influence is what I said before. People don't think, and you know, when you said conspiracy and all that, that's the same thing. They use these terms to demean people yes. and cause people not to listen to them. Oh, that's just, a, he's an idiot. He's a fool. He's yes. a conspiracy theorist. Well... There's never been a conspiracy in the world, you know. Yeah. Tell Julius Caesar that when you, if you ever see him, you know, tell him, <laughs> Julius, there wasn't any conspiracy against you. You know, they just stabbed you 28 times because they, you know. That was just, actually 44, wasn't it? Uh, suddenly happened, you know. Yeah. Uh, just, they didn't, you know, uh, they just went in that day and got mad and did it. Uh, no, they conspired, they conspired to kill against him. against him. So when we see these things uh now, to be sure, there is there there are those out there that that take it to a point too far. Yeah, there are those that say conspire. They bring up this conspiracy thought process that's just kind of whacked. Yeah, and because of that, then we throw everything out. See, right. that's that's a tendency of men to throw right. everything out just because one person uh, did something uh, dumb or stupid, <laughs> and so then we throw. But you can't ignore these things that are going on. You can't ignore it. And I think, I said this, and uh, I know I, I'm upset people because of the fans and all the people and everything, but I lived through the 60s. And I remember when the Beatles got off the plane and walked onto American soil. The world changed, friend. There was an influence that came with those boys. I don't have anything against any of them personally. I mean, they're just... Don't know. You no, know, I know. I didn't think they were that good. They weren't even that good of musicians, and I didn't think they could sing all that well. And even Paul McCartney, I read later uh, an article uh, in a, in a magazine by him. They were giving him an interview, and one of the questions was, "Why did you all of a sudden stop touring?" Yep. And Paul McCartney said this. He said, "We stopped because nobody was listening." To our music, and I read an article uh, article the other day that said the the on top of that, he says we couldn't hear ourselves on the on the on the on the stage. Right, there was so much screaming and yelling yeah. from the time they walked out there, scream and yell, they couldn't hear themselves. They and they said, "What's the sense?" Exactly. What's the sense? And they said this? it's it, he, and to to that point, he said it was killing, you know, our music, and we didn't want you know it, we couldn't hear each other. He said we sounded bad. Yeah. So what happened? A, a spirit of influence mm -hmm. came. And when I say spirit, I'm talking about a, a uh, mindset that came. And then the drug culture came. Now, there's, they've been using drugs for years, but not like they were then. Right. And the flower children and all the hippies and all the things, and then the revolt and the, and the uh, riots against society yes. and all of that kind of thing. And the world definitely changed. Yes. It changed. Yes, it did. Attitudes changed. Western civilization changed. Western civilization changed. Yes. And that was an opportunity that was taken. Now, the Beatles may have been unaware of it. Because sometimes people, they're, they're not always aware of how they're influenced and what they're doing. Right. See, but it was there. So when we discount other forces in this world, see, we always think of the Lord and, and think of Jehovah and Jesus. But see, there's an opposing force. Yes. 
there's an opposing force that opposes them, and he opposes them through man. The king, and he's 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 got all the kingdoms of this world, as we know. Yeah, he's jealous. He hates Jehovah. He hates him. He hates us. And see, mankind, and I've said this before, mankind, I think, is the most precious thing that Jehovah ever made to him. It was precious to him. What, what did Satan try to do? He tried to take it away from him, to hurt him. And we fell into it. We just fell into it. Right on. You read the Old Testament. Every time that Israel uh, went after other gods, did all these kind of things, See, it, it hurt the Lord. It hurt him. And as you, as you said, there was long periods of time where he didn't bring judgment either. No. No. He was hurt. Yeah. But he stayed his He, stayed he his waited hand. to see if they would repent and come back. Yes, he gave them a shot. Yes. Here, and here's always amazed me. The Israelites saw the greatest miracles as far as physical miracles ever seen on the face of the earth. Now, Jesus... He emulated a couple of them by stopping the storm and the sea, but, and he fed 5,000, fed 7,000 another time, but, I mean, the crossing of the Red Sea, the pillar of fire and the cloud by night, the food in the desert, their clothes didn't wax old, and their shoes didn't wax old on their feet, 40 years. And here's, and then they walk up to the Jordan and it separates, it parts, so they can go across, yeah. and so forth. Well, then why would you turn around and bow down to a dumb rock? I don't get it, see, I just don't understand but, that. And here's the thing, and I, th I think it's, I think this is an interesting con context, and we, you know, um, I can't get into answering that right now because we're out of time right but i mean i brought that up a little earlier that's a good point <laughs> uh but it's it's not different here why do we believe joe biden is a believer in jesus christ right why do we believe that what and i think there are uh, there's a very interesting thought process to that and how we see jehovah and how we see the things and what we've done in the earth and what that goes to. And when people talk about worship, see, we're always, we're always in this place where we think we got to go to this building where everybody's, oh, you know. Worship is not that. Nope. That is not worship, folks. Going to a building and sitting in a pew and going through the ceremonies and things like that, that's not your worship. That's not worship. We've made it that. That's what we've made it. But your reasonable service or your reasonable worship, as Paul talked about, was how you conduct your life absolutely on a daily basis before men and before Jehovah. That. And therefore, it becomes an interesting thought process of how we've detached ourselves from that and brought it into this other context and what men believe. Why do we believe that that if we do this, if we put ourselves in this place, well, others are doing it. Why? Is, how is that not true? How is this not something that we should do? Isn't? And if they're doing it, shouldn't we do it too? And that's what's happening right now. Well, you know, I mean, everybody's doing. We're we're all just trying to be safe. It's it's being Christ-like to put on a mask and get the vaccine and do the. It's it's okay to do those things. Because everybody's doing it. I'm reminded of what Jesus said. And I'll finish with this. And we'll come back tomorrow and we'll talk some more about these things. He's looking at the disciples one day and he says, you know, he says, uh, broad is the gate and wide is the path that leads to destruction. And many there find it. He says, but narrow is the gate and straight. And that isn't straight like a straight line. That's a straight like an obstacle course. Like the bearing straight. S-T-R-A-I-T. -T, straight. Full of obstacles. Narrow is the gate. And full of obstacles is the way that leads unto righteousness. And few there are that find it. It's an interesting statement by Jesus yes, himself. So I think we need to be careful 
about what we're listening to. The language of truth is under attack, and we need to understand and know the truth. Till tomorrow, we love you, we care about you. Have a great day in the Lord. Always remember to give love and give life and give Jesus.